It's me, Reen. I'm coming in. Oh, hey. I didn't think anyone would be swinging by this late. I figured everyone would be fast asleep by now. Well, I noticed you leaving your room, so I thought I'd tag along and see what's up. Mind if I join you? Sure, go right ahead. Ah, there really is nothing like soaking in a hot spring under a wintry sky. You can feel all of your exhaustion just melting away. <laughs> This is my favorite season to use the springs, too. Still, what made you want to come back in here? I mean, I know it's nice, and it's not like I can talk, but we were all in here earlier today. Oh, I just thought this might be a good chance to talk to you, that's all. Or, more specifically, I thought this would be an ideal opportunity to say thank you. You're thanking me? For what? I don't feel like I've done anything that warrants being thanked. Well, everything up to this point, I guess. I wanted to thank you for surviving all this time so that we could meet again. And I wanted to thank you for coming all the way to Celtic to get us. I feel like it was only thanks to you that all of us were able to come together again, even if it is without Crow. Thanks to me? That's not true. It was only thanks to everyone's support, yours included, that I was able to do anything at all. <laughs> In a way, you're right. Still, Class 7 is what it is because you're at its center. We believed you'd stand back up again and fight, and rightly so. That's the very reason we're all here today. I know I feel that way, and I'm sure that everyone else does too. So, please, let me thank you, Reed. I... <laughs> hey! I'm not supposed to laugh, damn it. I'll admit that may be an overdramatic way of putting it, but I don't think you're in any position to criticize. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't laughing at you. It just finally hit home that everything Elise said was true. I had no idea that everyone was thinking of me as much as they were, or that so many people were looking out for me. It just made me realize all over again how blind I've been all this time. So I couldn't help but laugh at myself. Oh, right. Well, as long as you understand now. We didn't become friends overnight, but since then, we've all formed a bond that won't be so easily broken. Don't forget that. Don't worry, I won't. Now that Class 7 is together again, I'm sure we'll be able to go back to the Academy one day. As long as we don't give up, I know we can make that a reality. So, let's give it everything we've got. Right.
Sorry I'm late. Not at all. You're right on time. I take it everything's squared away with the chess club? It was nothing special. We just played a few games with the upper class students like we always used to. Of course, we couldn't decide a winner, but it's not like there won't be time for that in the days to come. <laughs> Good luck with that. You know, it's odd coming back here and seeing things exactly how we left them. It's almost as if this place were frozen in time these past few months. Yeah, that's true. But what do you say we walk around for a bit? It'll give us a chance to see how things are upstairs, too. Might as well. the same up here too. Can't say I'm terribly surprised. As ridiculous as it sounds, I was hoping against hope that we'd just find Crow sitting in his room as if nothing had happened. <laughs> Honestly, that does sound like a long con he'd try to pull off. I'm surprised the common areas are so clean though. I figured they'd be covered in a few coats of dust by now. I guess the upper class students worked hard to keep things nice around here. Presumably so. <laughs> I can scarcely believe how different a person I've become in less than a year. When I first arrived here, my blood would start to boil if I so much as heard the term upper class. But now, you're a new man. Honestly, when I think back to how I acted on our first day, even Milliam seems dignified in comparison. I came here with a firmly ingrained belief that nobles were the enemy, so that's the way I treated them. <laughs> That's certainly a time in my life that I'd rather forget. Ugh, how embarrassing. It's not like you didn't have your reasons, though. After what you went through as a child, I don't think anyone could blame you. Besides, we've all changed for the better since we first showed up at the Academy. I wonder if that's true. You're right about the reason, of course. I've hated nobles ever since the day they took my cousin from me. My time here helped me realize that not all nobles are so despicable, and that I was misplacing the blame for her death. That's something you and our other noble classmates taught me, and it makes sense to me on a logical level. Claiming that I've matured as a person feels somewhat... empty. Because I can't be sure I really have. How so? Having a logical understanding of something is one thing, but completely restructuring your beliefs around it is another. This war has proven that to me. I know as well as anybody that the nobility as a whole isn't the cause. But the nobles who are have taken so many lives. 
I know it's wrong. In my heart, I still blame every last one. So the things I say and do might have changed, but inside, I'm the same hateful, immature child I was on the day we met. Still, that used to frustrate me, e even make me resent myself. But not anymore. Why's that? Because I've accepted myself. My immaturity is still a part of who I am. I, I can't change that in a day, but I can keep trying. We're all immature in our own ways. But together as a class, we managed to make up for each other's flaws, making it the perfect environment for me to learn and grow. And it doesn't hurt my best friends a part of it. I mean you, Reen. All I can do is keep learning and improving. That's the only thing any of us can do. And we've still got a long way to go. After this war's over and once we've rescued Dad from the Alliance, this nation as we know it will never be the same again. Laughing, damn it! I'm in the middle of a serious, impassioned speech here. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. You, you know how sometimes something makes so much sense that you can't help but laugh? <laughs> That's you in this ultra serious speech. I beg your pardon? You've got no shortage of strengths, but the one that really stands out is your ability to face the whole world directly. Eusis might argue you're a little too direct, since you do occasionally run yourself straight into trouble, but that stems from the strength of your conviction. You stand by your beliefs, and you're willing to fight for them. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Sure it is. It's why you're able to tackle problems that others would rather avoid, even the most difficult ones. Like the class system. Most people would have just seen it as a fact of life, but you see it as a problem that needs uprooting. I have nothing but respect for that. You're serious in the truest sense of the word, so this speech just made me laugh. What? That wasn't the response I was hoping to elicit. Then what's with all this heart-to-heart -heart stuff all of a sudden? <laughs> you should know by now that if you try to give me a serious speech, I'll give you one right back. And I'm not even done. I'm being completely honest when I say that as long as the two of us are together, we can build a brighter future for Erebonia. Throughout the war, so many have gotten injured, or worse, lost their lives. And I don't want it to be for nothing at all. I want a future where people can look back and say their losses weren't in vain. That's certainly ambitious, but I'm sure we will. <laughs> We'll live our lives to better those of the people around us, starting with taking Crow back from the Alliance. And then we'll build that future of ours, piece by piece. It's a promise. <laughs>